Rest in Profits live podcast, dishing the dirt on the death care industry. I broke up there a little bit. Um, but yeah, the cemetery's filthy. Uh, that's another one. Uh, does not upkeep the property, doesn't return the calls. And a lot of that, you know, somebody's complaining when they call in. Um, the staff finds out pretty quick, you know, who that is. And uh, they're going to stop answering the calls uh, when they know who's calling in. Because uh, they know it's going to be the same thing. And it's really out of their hands. They can't, um, you know, they don't have the money at the location to call someone to come clean something up. Uh, it all has to be done through the corporate office. And, you know, you sometimes have to get bids, you know, three or four bids just to come out and, you know, maybe trim the bushes or the hedges or, you know, to clean up something. Um, it's, you know, a lot of times it's a process just to have something minor done that could only take, you know, 30 minutes. But, uh, the, yeah, one complaint that's on here, you know, cemetery filthy, doesn't upkeep the property, doesn't return calls. Um, What's and, new, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, um, you know, the big thing with that, and that's what, you know, I didn't really like about the whole industry itself, uh, not just that corporation, but others as well. Uh, they take, you know, 10% of the property sales or burial right sales for perpetual care. And then you see all of these complaints, uh, not only on the BBB, but, you know, hearing them every day, hearing them from the staff. Uh, from people coming in or calling about things are just not upkept and that's not perpetual care. Um, I've, you know, determined that uh, instead of being buried at a, you know, corporate cemetery, such as the one that uh, I have property at, that I'm going to go to the local sim, uh, city cemetery because the city actually, you know, upkeeps it and it looks good. They have workers that, you know, they pay and that's their job and they do it. So I think that was another big complaint on there as well across the board. Yeah, I agree. And um, just to, just so that we can catch everything up, it looks like we've had some recording difficulties. Um, so, Mr. Black, if you would, will you kind of go back over the breakdown of how the Better Business um, complaints work and the uh, statistics for that real quickly? Yeah. Um, and like I said, the, the BBB, I mean, that's great, something to look at. But um, for this corporation, the response rate, is only 24%. So for all the complaints that are coming in, they're only responding to 24% of them. And the stats show 132 complaints over three years, around a little bit less than four a month. Um, and then 45 complaints in the last uh, 12 months, so around four a month. But um, they're not accredited. And the BB rating is a D minus, which, like I said, I'm sort of surprised that it's even a D minus that might be pretty high based on the response rate and all the complaints. But it, like I said earlier, um, if you do have a complaint from the grass is too high, the cemetery is dirty, there's trash everywhere, the roads have potholes, um, you know, whatever it might be, the lawnmower or the mowing crew has, you know, scratched my brand new marker up, uh, scratched the bronze up on it or you know, I've seen in the past where mowing crews have hit headstones or benches and completely destroyed them, just kept going. Uh, but if you do have any type of complaint, go to your state cemetery commission. It will be resolved a, a whole lot quicker than with the Better Business Bureau or any other route. Um, I mean, I've seen, you know, lots of different ways to complain about things, but the best thing to do is go straight to your state cemetery commission and they will uh, send a notification to the corporation and well to the cemetery which will go to the corporation and it will be took care of yes and and the reason it will be taken care of that way the reason that is your best route to go as opposed to a better business bureau or a google review or a yelp review is when the cemetery board gets hold of uh, these complaints they issue a timeline and it's usually uh within 30 days you've got 30 days to officially uh, comply and reply to uh, the complaint. And I know for the state that we live in, they're pretty much a sticker on it. If they told you 30 days, they're going to be back out there with you uh, to make sure everything was done like it should be. Um, so uh, again, Mr. Black, that is uh, definitely uh, the best way to, to go about that is to go directly to um, your state cemetery board. And, you know, just going through some of these uh, 
different complaints here. I'm looking at one here. My mother died on April 24th, uh, 2021, and was buried uh, at um, Southwood Memorial Park. I purchased her, her headstone and was told it would arrive in three months, uh, which it did not. And <clears throat> we know how that works. During the pandemic, uh, the headstones and things like that, the orders were slowed because of the vendor they used. The vendor was um, importing the um, granite and marble from outside the United States. So it would take much, much longer. Again, why not use vendors that are already in the United States? I can't answer that, but I know that's where the delay came from. Uh, but just in reading this complaint, um, it says, uh, I was told there will be, it will arrive in another three months, which it did not. And, it, and again, um, that's a, you know, why would you tell somebody it's going to be there in six weeks to two months when you know good and well it's not going to be? You did that to make the sale, pure and simple. That's why you did it. And uh, now you're having to deal with the repercussion. Um, I was pulled to the side and told there's nothing that could be done and had no idea when the headstone would arrive. I went to the graveside on 6-12-22 and the headstone still was not there. It has been a total of one year and it has not arrived. However, I was pushed and prodded from day one to make sure I went ahead and paid the uh, headstone off. And again, that's that's the normal practice. Um, you can wait on us, but we can't wait on you. You've got to go ahead and pay. Um, nature of the dispute, the headstone has never arrived and no one knows when it will arrive. And that's not true either. They do know when this will arrive. They're just choosing not to deal with the issue because they've got your money and they're ready to move on to the next person. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's, you know, it's a sales organization. Uh, that's what it's about again, about the uh, profit, not the families. Um, there, you know, was a huge delay, like everything with, you know, during the pandemic, but, you know, you can't continue to blame everything on the pandemic. Um, I mean, it, it, yes, it was bad. Things were delayed, but it became a, an excuse that was just, people got tired of hearing it uh, because they started seeing things other things in their life, you know, that they had ordered or purchased come in and yeah. they're still waiting on, you know, uh, markers <laughs> to come in. But yeah. And that, then you can see, I think on this one, there was a follow-up by the corporation saying um, yeah. that it wasn't, it's there. It's great, it's, <laughs> but it's not installed because yeah. they don't have the crew to install it. Um, yeah. So just another excuse. And, you know, in my experience, I don't know about yours, but in my experience, I've seen, you know, markers come in, ready to be installed. Um, and, you know, maybe there's a lot of burials. Maybe there's no crew uh, or little to no help because markers are, they're pretty difficult to install. Um, yeah. you know, some, especially, you know, upright granite markers, you know, flats, uh, a little bit different, but, you know, people don't realize how much those stones weigh, but, you know, one guy can't do those. I've only had one person that worked for me that could actually do those by himself. Yeah. And he had been doing them for years and years and years. But, but still, you know, if you, yeah, if you don't have a staff, you know, which is basically the corporation's fault for not hiring enough people. But if you don't have a staff, uh, again, just cutting costs, if you don't have a staff, you cannot put these markers down. So I've seen instances, I'm sure you probably have too, where markers have come in and it's been months and months and the family will come and see the marker at the location, but it has not been installed where it's supposed to yeah. go, which is ridiculous. Well, the issue I have with this right here, because I'm, <laughs> I'm reading the complaint. And this is from the, the GM or general manager who oversees the uh, cemetery location. This marker has been placed on such and such grave. It is not installed, but has been set on her grave. Uh, and, and it's like Mr. Black has said, and uh, you'll hear us refer to each other as Mr. Black and Mr. White moving forward just to, to help things. The installation will happen later next week. We're working very hard to place the markers that arrive on graves so the family can see them. We don't have the manpower. Well, my issue with that, and I think you'll agree with me on this, uh, because we know what this is, and we can see through this bullshit, one and done. If you had enough manpower to place it on the grave without the install, why don't you just go ahead and install it? You're touching it. One and done. Right. <laughs> one and done. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. And that's a lot of what these complaints you'll see is, you know, the markers. And like I said, you can only, um, and I think that one may have been from June of last year, but you can only use, I mean, we're in 2023 now, so you can only use delay of um, due to, you know, the pandemic delay of stuff being delivered so long. And people know in June of last year, there shouldn't be a delay. Yeah, no, it shouldn't be. <laughs> Shouldn't be. I mean, pandemic. So, and uh, and and to uh, the evil empire's credit, uh, the pandemic did slow things down. Again, it goes back to uh, their vendor of choice, which is probably another podcast all within itself, because um, there's kickbacks involved there, and we were always um, it was always alluded to. We weren't quite sure, but there's a possibility that particular vendor, the evil empire owns a portion of on. Uh, and I, I think you've probably heard that too, haven't you? Yeah, I think they're, if they don't own a portion, they're one of their biggest clients and, um, you know, they would pretty much run the show. I would say that we yeah. should get first priority. Yeah. And, um, again, the breakdown here, um, uh, folks that are listening is that you, you've not properly notified your customer, your client, the family, that there will be a delay with the marker. Okay. And when we say marker, we mean memorial. Uh, when we refer to it as a marker, that is uh, biz- business uh, slang in the industry. We do mean memorial. The family's not being notified or was not being notified at the time that there will be a delay. And they're not being notified because that could hurt the sale. Because your funeral home next door who will deal with someone local could get the marker in a lot quicker. Uh, so, again, you have pressure from the um, sales rep who's uh, getting that pressure from above. We, we've we got to move this marker. We've got to get this marker sold because um, if I remember correctly, you fill it in. What's the, the markup on those markers? Well, usually across the board, 32 times to 3.5 times um and so if you're looking at a marker that cost a thousand dollars uh for the corporation to purchase it then they're going to turn around and sell it for three thousand two hundred to maybe thirty five hundred dollars not counting any additional fees and or sales tax that's right that's right and so what you're dealing with is a a sales rep who is under a lot of pressure to sell that marker so what they will do is not fully disclose the time that it will be uh, shipped and arrived. And uh, used to, there used to be a little form that they were uh, encouraged to get a uh, customer to sign. But see, the sales rep doesn't win um, because when the client's pissed and they come back and say, hey, look, you promised me this, and then they make a complaint, well, then the sales rep gets thrown under the bus because there's no win for them. Uh, they'll go and say, well, we told you to have the customer sign this, but it's it's um, it's double talk on, on one line of the tongue. You better sell this and you better get this sold because your job is on the line. And then on the back end, oh, well, you know, you, you, you didn't disclose everything to the customer. This is all you. And that's by design. That is designed that way so that nobody above a certain level has to deal with those complaints. And um, I'm sure you agree with me. There were many times we saw things implemented that we knew were going to cause flags, but upper management did not care because they knew they were not going to have to deal with it. Yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, what we, you know, the people that tried to help the families and cared about the families, what, you know, we would always tell them in order to get the markers and this, you know, trying to help them instead of, you know, just get money out of them. But, you know, and this is true, people listening. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had someone, you know, close to you pass, you know, where you're responsible for taking care of the service, the funeral uh, and the burial. But um, that marker being placed is closure that helps, you know, move on. Um, and you can imagine waiting, you know, months and months or even a year, for a marker plus, you know, grieving and then, and having to go through all of the runaround that you're getting, trying to get the marker in. And it's just, 
agonizing, you know, for the family. So it's, uh, it, again, you know, it's profit before families and people. Here's a good one that, that will kind of go into some of the, uh, practices that we have to deal with. And, and I'll read the full complaint. How would you like it if the worst possible things in life happened to you, like the loss of a young spouse and brother, and then your parents? And you have the cemetery continuing to call you, send sales reps to your family, and then tell me, the person who paid for all of it, that my account is under audit. With every phone call and correspondence they mail, they just make every, and again, I'm reading this, so um, uh, you can tell they're upset. There's not a, a really good flow to it, but I'll try and piece it together. Just to get me to their office, and this is in all caps, to buy more services. These events were the most tragic experiences in my life. Bad enough I had to deal with these things at the time and bury my loved ones to have their insensitive predators calling me to remind me of the terrible tragedies Tragedies, after I repeatedly told them to stop. And it's causing me emotional distress every time they contact me and they continue to do so anyway. I will be contacting the district attorney and I want it on record that they are harassing me and have been since 1990. This letter is dated 6 2022 uh, I need it to stop. I've warned them over and over, but still they persist. Uh, Mr. Black, will you speak to this particular practice? Um, because we refer to it as, as file diving uh, and why how it works, why it's, they're being told to do it, and this type of practice that sales reps are talking about. Well, uh, it's sort of a, um, but like you said, they called it file digging or, you know, file grabbing, things like that, but uh, sort of a deceptive practice. Um, usually what would happen, and this is what you're trained to do uh, as a sales rep slash family counselor. Um, again, got to have sales, have a budget to hit each month in sales um, in order, you know, to be profitable, of course. But um, the way that, they were trained and I was trained, probably you too. Um, what you do is you call, go just digging through files, see who needs what. Uh, if they don't have marker, if they don't have, you know, whatever it might be, if they need to, you know, if you need to sell an additional space, whatever the case may be. Uh, but you would give those people a call and tell them that you are updating their privacy file. Um, who is, a, and that's actually who is able to talk to the cemetery in case they should pass. Usually, you know, if a mother would put her spouse, her children, um, you know, things like that. But a lot of times you would call and they said, we're like, what? Well, somebody just called me, you know, a few months ago and I came in and filled that out. But it's all to get you in to for an appointment. Uh, you cannot do it over the phone. You have to go into the location at the cemetery in the office to do it but it's all to get you to come in. It reminds me of a timeshare uh, where they get you in and they beat you and beat you and beat you and in hopes that you're going to purchase something else. Uh, but it really does. And anybody that's ever dealt with timeshare industry, uh, they're great salespeople if you're looking for great salespeople, but, and they're doing their job, but it's, it's literally harassment. I mean, and, you know, that's the whole point though, is to get you into the office. And notice that she used the word audit. Uh, and that's because when you hear the word audit, what do you think about? It? You think about the IRS, um, mm -hmm. bank account being audited. So the word is placed there on purpose because it, it brings up anxiety, fear, dread. So it's a power word being used to get that customer to come into the office. And it's done on purpose. And uh, the sad part about it is because uh, it's all large file cabinets, and this is across the board. I don't care what anybody says. I know what I'm talking about. You know what you're talking about. It's a room that is filled with file cabinets. It's all on paper. There's nothing digitized. Um, it, it, like we said in the other podcast, if there's a fire, you are screwed, okay? And so be given, given the fact that it's that way, uh, there's no way to go in on a computer and check and see and say, oh, uh, this person was contacted three weeks ago. OK, you can't you can't do it. I mean, they'll tell you they can because of their CRM uh, software, but that's not true. 
Yeah, that's right. And, you know, just looking at this complaint, um, another one thing, a topic I would say when there is a complaint like this and, you know, people are contacted telling, you know, do not call us anymore. It's always blaming on someone else by the corporation, you know, oh, that sales counselor or um, sales reps no longer with us. You know, that wasn't us. They, you know, they do have a CRM system, but you know, it, the CRM system is more work for the sales reps and the managers. And usually, you know, all the stuff that's put in those, I would say most of it was just BS. It was never legit appointments or calls, just trying to show that they were doing some work. So, you know, this complaint, it doesn't surprise me one bit, you know, when they say, uh, when the corporation says that, oh, we've, you know, put them on a no call list and that sales rep is gone. That won't happen again. And then they come right back. The customer does and uh, rejects that response. Um, trying to what solve it. For the BBB. Yeah. yeah so, solve it for the BBB. And they, you know, basically say, how dare they such liars? Yeah. And, and if you'll notice in the response uh, and I, I'm assuming this might be the sales manager, not necessarily the GM. Um, under down here, they said, um, it's possible someone else saw her on an old IOA and attempted to call her with no result and did not make a record of it. It also shows in the CRM record that a name that I do not recognize updated the record April of this year. So you, you really took time to write that because uh, I would have a field day with you over that. So you're telling me somebody's updated that record, but you don't know who they are. So somebody come in off the street and just pull that record and update it because you should know who your staff are. Well, that's what it says at the end of uh, the business's response is I assume that a third party marketing was making the calls. That, ne <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> and And the way it's worded, uh, they're saying the actual file. So you, you allowed somebody to come in, in your office and do third party calls and update your file, but you don't know who they were. Yeah. And that's files it. are never supposed to leave the office. I mean, it's, and that's not going to happen. Yeah. That's a, they had a right to reject that. Um, so, uh, well, sir, it looks like uh, we are on the downside here. It looks like we are about to run out of time. Uh, we've got just a few more minutes. Is there anything you'd like to to wind this up with, to talk about anything we might talk about on the next podcast? Well, yeah, before we get to that, a word of advice, because spring is basically here and you're going to uh, get into mowing season. A lot of southern states, I'm sure, are already into mowing season at cemeteries. Northern states will not be far behind. Um, just remember, don't waste your time complaining to the BBB. Uh, or complaining even to the, you know, after at least one call to the cemetery, uh, if they don't help you and, you know, go straight to the state cemetery commission and it'll save you a lot of time. It, it so, really will. Yeah. And before you think, oh, they don't want to hear what I've got to say, they're not going to listen to me. And that's further, furthers from the truth. They, they want to know. Um, you and I both dealt with other state cemeteries besides the one in our own states and they all seem to be very structured the same they they want to know yeah what's their job yeah it's their job um as we come to a close we've got roughly four more minutes coming up in the next podcast um, um if you have anything that you would like to know about the cemetery business anything that we've not covered uh, send us some questions. Just drop a comment down uh, in, in our YouTube channel and we'll answer the questions. Uh, we'll, we'll gather up the questions and save them for the next podcast. We'll go over them and answer them. Again, today, we just wanted to go over the better business complaints because there's so many of them. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that? No, it's uh, appreciate everyone listening and, um, Looking forward to getting out more information. And like you said, if you have anything you want to discuss, send it in 